Welcome pool lovers tuning in from around the world to the 25th annual Derby City Classic here at Caesars just outside of Louisville and I'm telling you things are really heating up here in the Diamond Bigfoot Arena. We're over halfway through the tournament and today well we're going to find out who's making it into the final four and going to be the champion this year of the Bigfoot. Anybody excited here at Derby City? <laughs> They're definitely excited. I know I'm excited, and let's get right to it. First up, he's a 2012 Derby Banks champion, 2016 Billiard Expo Players 10-ball champion, and back-to-back -back Texas Open 9-ball champion. He's sponsored by Predator, and he's from Toronto, Canada. Make some noise for Mr. Smooth, John Mora. And his opponent is the U.S. Open champion, world nine ball champion, and six times Moscone Cup for Team Europe. Sponsored by How Tip, Predator, Andy Cloth, and Apex Tables. From Brunnen, Germany, the killer, Joshua Filler. Yeah. Ricky Bryant is our referee and sending it up to the AccuStats Skybox. Welcome aboard, pool fans. World-class pool demands world-class analysis, and for that, we have Jeremy Jones providing his insights. My name is Mark Wilson. Glad to have you alongside, Jeremy, and give us something to look for in this one. Yeah, we got a couple Southpaws here to start. What is this, day three of the Bigfoot and the Derby City Classic. A lot of firepower out there on this table to start. Our match is off, and of course, both names speak for themselves. I think you're going to see improvement from both these guys. They played pretty solid in their opening rounds, but I think they're going to play even better. The table's starting to tighten up. You're going to start to see a hair more moving, I think, uh, tactically. Um, but I really think uh, once you get through that first round, Mark, you start to see. The, the table's been playing tremendous all week, but like Jeremy said, the cloth is breaking in, and now those four corner balls have been starting to find the pockets a little bit more often. Yeah, I think we'll see a variety of breaking, but... I think you're going to start to see the guys open up a little more, um, you know, not play as much controlled break at times. I don't think the controlled breakers got through round one too well anyways, uh, to be fair. You mentioned two left-handers, but one's a natural left-hander and the other one isn't. Then John Mora, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, if you don't know otherwise, the man breaking the balls, you can see he's breaking righty, does that steal for a little power, but... He had to switch for some medical reasons, uh, what is it, about six years now, something like that. Time flies, it may be a hair longer, but he wanted to see if he could do it lefty because of that medical issue, and he's done an incredible job. I've never seen it before where a guy won pro tournaments right-handed and then came back, reinvented himself as a lefty and won a couple pro tournaments. Well, you know, just... All of us have seen Rocky, right? I think it was Rocky II where he, he went he went from South Pole <laughs> to righty, you know what I mean? And that's a real thing to try and switch. And just imagine doing it with the cue stick in your hand and something so delicate as, as pool. So. Yeah, very few people can become a pro dominant hand, let alone their non-dominant hand. But this is a, a testimonial to his work ethic. Yeah, absolutely. And he's looking more and more like his righty every day. Cue ball got away from him a little bit on the break, but he did make a ball. Nice opening shot there. Smooth it down the rail. Now the rest of the layout uh, is very manageable. Yeah, it's a little tricky, the three to the four, because of the five there. It's really hard to get the natural. You may have to take a little distance, I think, on, on, the, uh, on the four, but not too much. I wouldn't even try to get a whole lot better. He could roll forward. I think if he can manage just like an inch or two, he can play the three and maybe just slimly or very lightly graze the five as going forward to get onto the four. Looks like maybe he's doing a little more than that. Okay, he decided to go f more forward. Now, if he goes forward off the five, is there a little problem maybe with the side pocket mark going towards there? Or is he going to push through a little more? Well, he's going to, let's see, I'm. Uh, he's going to bump the five for sure. Yeah, but I'm saying where's the cue ball really going there? I know it's got to oh, go a little forward, but it may yeah. go towards that rail. I don't think it's going to go towards the side. but It's definitely going to land, but, so it's going to trickle out there about another foot forward of there, and he's just going to have to cut the four in. He's also conscientious about where the five moves to here. 
Might move it forward so it plays in the other side past the nine. It may go all the way to the six, actually, depending on the speed. Doesn't take much. Yeah, oh. this, I was a little worried about where it was going. Oh, he didn't get no. Yeah, that's why I say maybe just play it as light as you can to make sure yeah. you got that cut. It's hard to tell from here. He's down on one knee to see if that even goes by there, if he can even hit the edge of the four now. Look at he's now down, down on both knees, so you know it's close. Ricky Bryant's playing. Oh, please kick. <laughs> I don't have to call if this wiggles or that. Kick. <laughs> You could hear it from here. Huh, yeah, I could imagine, like, oh, boy, my eyes. I don't know. Oh, that's a great view there. It oh, is. He's just trying to slimly, and this is where, where he'll, he'll change. Anytime he's, like, really spinning the ball, there's a lot of swerve. And the reason why, anytime you're, you know, adding spin like that, especially elevation, you need as much touch as possible. And he's still got a little better touch on the right side of the cube. He's going to go one rail now. And try to kick it in the corner, and maybe get a backdoor safety if he hits a flush. Yeah, he may cross side. Well, he went power. Yeah. I was surprised by that. I thought he'd go a little softer and try to keep the six and ten as potential blocking balls. Well, that, and he could have bumped the four of the rail and to the end rail with a, a medium stroke, kind of like. If he makes it there, the cue ball's still going way down table at that speed. So th that's the only thing that's a little peculiar. But he was trying to get separation. Well, I talked about this with. Alvin a lot of times, you know, like the worst thing you can do ever with Alvin is starting with ball in hand, which is any player, but once he settles in a few strokes, a few shots, it's just not going to be many mistakes from there. Yeah. If you had to rank the most complete players on Europe, wouldn't you think Alvin is number one? If you look at mental toughness, uh, yeah, kicking, the, safety. Uh, after, uh, after the break, it's a real good argument. I think his break holds him off number one a little bit just because it's not quite as consistent as those other guys um but it's close i mean yeah you know, i mean yeah. if he's breaking the balls yeah boy I, you know whenever it comes to crunch time and there's an open layout he just gets through that every darn time and he never gets himself in trouble he's such a composed type of guy and he changes the conditions really well as also as far as like he really knows the slick table you know a lot of these guys when they can check the cue ball here and there uh you know, really good with the with position and whatnot. But with a slick table, you got to know a little more. And uh, Alvin certainly does that We're talking as well about as anyone. Alvin Ocean, I'm hoping to see him here this week because this is a Moscone Cup rankings points event, uh, the nine ball. And I would imagine the top European players will be here. I would think Ruiz and Alcady and Gachi. Yeah, we'll <laughs> see about the big man. I hope Gachi's here. We'd all love to see him back in action. Of course, he did get back in action a little bit towards the end of 2023. Another player that had a little medical issue with an accident, off-road accident. All right, Filler chipped off the remaining five or six balls there. Takes the lead 1-0. Four matches of action coming to you today. Next up, what is it? Uh, Gorston Zelensky, I believe. Shane Van Boning was knocked off last night by Lee Van Corteza. It was a tremendous match. Uh, hardly anybody would have beaten Shane in that match. Uh, Shane didn't get many rolls, but he did not play bad. As Corteza just didn't make any mistakes and uh, won a couple safety skirmishes. And then at one point, when the score was tied five apiece, Lee Van pocketed 30 consecutive balls to take an 8 5 lead. I know it sounds crazy, but the name you mentioned a minute ago, you know, before his accident, um, I think he was looking to be the best player in the world, uh, you know, maybe just in 23, but the way he was starting to play under the pressure and the other players could see it was Kachi. I mean, if you want to see one of the two of the best sets, actually, Filler in the semifinal of the UK Open and then the final on the four inch pockets. And I'm telling you, these things were playing tough. Go watch the final that Kachi played against Filler in the UK Open. You'll it's just incredible. Uh, he just totally manhandled the table, never backed down a shot. And he, he started to just kind of play like that every match, it seemed like. But what a nice opening break. Everything's over the pockets, open. Yeah. Well, that's you figure, you know, the, the guys to start playing and breaking a little better overall. 
really hard to make a mistake from here. There's a little difference, you know, overall how you play the 10-footer. Not a whole lot. You never want to change a ton no matter what table you're on. Um, but I think the 10-footer more than anything is you just never can take a shot off. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's the real demanding part of it mentally and physically. You just cannot, you know, ever take a time out at the table, it seems like. Wouldn't stress too much here. Probably would like to play the six nine if you can, if you can get comfortable there. I mean, it's hard. Yeah, to, yeah it's hard to lose the six off the combination and not get an easy shot, especially with a seven. You know, in such a good spot, you're not worried about where the six goes as far as getting position on the seven. So, I'd rather play the combo if I could. This got kind of awkward for a left-hander. This plays pretty easy for a right-hander. Yeah, the like, ten foot table really has that show up. Yeah, he needs, look at this. He's, all he's got to do is draw past the side a little bit. Doesn't need all the way back. Bridge hand was right at the joint of the cue. He got it back nicely though. He doesn't even bother to take the extension off. He <laughs> looks like a pole vaulting pole he's got out there now. Yeah, and that's the one time I kind I never express extra right with, when you're helping with somebody. Don't ever think like you need extra. But when you're stretched, that's the one time I'll tell them. Because you're out of position, you're not in your strong position being stretched. The cue's got a little more resistance, you know, as your hand comes back on the shaft. Uh huh. That's the one time I kind of express to people, don't be afraid to feel like you put a little more into the, into the stroke just because you're not in a, a real natural kind of physical position. I don't think there's many worries here, right? Just roll it in, go straight at the tent. Filler uses extension here. Time-wise, a 30-second shot clock. Looks like now he's thinking about bearding him, though. He surely oh, not. no way. He wow. is. I don't see how that could have been the shot ever. Oh, that was bizarre. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. He was trying to lay the six up for the side, I thought, but he overhit it regardless. But, man, and he, he could have played the six into the rail. Oh, you yeah, almost couldn't all, miss all, the nine. Yeah. That was very surprising that he let the, uh, the six ball get away. Now, <laughs> yeah, a good chance it's going to be one to one. As he dragged this, trying to float one rail behind the seven with low left. I mean, there isn't a whole lot of options here. Yeah, like that little mini drag. He hit it. No he good. didn't really slow the cue ball down, no though. Good. He hit more of a rolling ball. Than That's a, a hard shot to, to control that from that range. Yeah, absolutely. I almost thought he got a four rail to ten and just let the cue ball go and go for the backdoor safety because yeah, it was kind of laying kind of good for that. I kind of thought maybe the six might kiss off the ten by the seven in the corner maybe, but John, who's won the banks here, I think it was 2012, he's going to go for this cross side. Oh, boy, that was good all the way till it didn't go in. I loved the way it was coming across the table. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, Filler didn't get a pocket here. He kind of see the sideward glance and of, now what do I do? Can he push through on the six and two rail the six around the seven and just follow it, you know what I mean, right right behind the seven? Oh, maybe, yeah. He's going behind this ten. This touch That's looks a, nice a lot shot. better. There, yeah. yeah. That was pretty high-quality stuff there. All right, the way this table's playing, I don't know if he can really hit right before the side and let it slide right. into the six. Uh, now the side pocket looms large for making the hit that you'd like to make on this. He's got to hit downward on this, or it's going to spread. He's trying to get them set two rails with a hair check. Right. And still, with all that check and a little bend, it still didn't get the two rails. So. Yeah, the six ball is you know a half a diamond from the side rail, so that makes that shot play a lot tougher. Yeah, and, it, and, you know, say he snookered a little more towards the middle of the table, yeah, the two rail is really good. But coming from that other pocket area, you'll realize that it's uh, even trying to check the ball, pretty pretty low percentage overall. Yeah, you have to judge it and then hit it just perfect. He was thinking the seven might help, but pocketing the ball. 
Will Filler escaped having to pay the ultimate price there for maybe a misjudgment? Two zeros are score. And it seems like no matter how great you are or what your name is, it's all the same. Like he was looking at the combination the entire time. And then last second he said, oh, let me play the bigger. <laughs> and, we, and we talk about that all the time, that it was just like a last second thought. Well, one of the contributing factors was using the extension on the queue and the bridge, too, because that was awkward. And I think maybe he thought he could just billiard it easier, but then the control of the six ball went to pieces. Yeah, he, well, he overhit it for sure. He was trying to let the cue ball run off the rail after it chipped the nine in. But, but uh, you know, I've seen him shoot righty. It's not it's not like anything like his lefty, and it's certainly yeah. not like his opponent's. Uh, but he can handle it. If know? he can, yeah. because the margin of error was huge on the nine. If, yeah. you, if you could just, even as bad as I am opposite-handed, I could probably make the nine. I wouldn't have great control with the six. It made my problem, but he's probably more dexterous than I am at that. So. Yeah, well, he's right-eye dominant, All right? Or no? Is it right-eye? Hold on, left? Right? No, he might be. I think he is, but. But you could really take a lot of people in the stands and make that combination. That's, yeah. how, that's how much room for yeah, there, there yeah. was. So. You can see, though, John, definitely definitely right-eye dominant. Or left-eye dominant, excuse me. And I think that had a little issue with his, his, his problem before. Again, the brake shot. Sometimes when he's jacked up, you know, on the rail, he'll go to righty, soft swerves or any kind of heavy spin. Pretty much. Mm, squared cool. him up much nicer this break. The first break, the cue ball went right to the side pocket. It didn't scratch, but look at this. Nice layout again. Yeah, this first shot, and this is where the 10 footer, you got to settle for some distance. You know, I don't know how the two in the side is, but this first shot's a little tricky coming back and forth. The speed's got to be good, but if you can get the two in the side just rolling this one in, you can shoot from there on the three. You don't really have to go any further. Well, you can also play this three cushions around. Yeah, I think he'll come twice. I think he might go three, though. Then you got to get on top of the four here if you're going to go twice. Yeah. I think you're right with the inside here, though. Speed's got to be good. Giddy on up. Giddy on up. Uh, he kind of got there. He's a little thin. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty thin. But that first shot, that's what I was saying. If he could just roll out yeah. and dink that two on the side, you can yeah. shoot from there on the three. Yeah. If you get good on the two, you roll yeah. forward to another gap, right? That cut in the one, if you hit it just a hint heavy with the overspin, then it loops a little bit, and that's what took the pace out of there. If he caught it a little bit thinner, then it comes right on the round where he was trying to get to. So banking again. This does have a safety attached to it if it misses. Yeah. Just Unless wrong. you miss it good. <laughs> if you yeah. if you hit real good, then if you miss it bad, then you get a little safety. But, but instead, no good. Yeah, it's a, we'll see what happens with Filler. And if John gets a chance to shake off that missed position, that bank, you know, he didn't expect it to hang. He figured it would either go in at that speed and that angle or get away from the pocket. Just hit the point just right. Oh, how Look at that the pretty shot. <laughs> it wasn't the right shot. It was just a pretty shot. Yeah. <laughs> Philly's smiling. Man, you really caught that pure. You know how much fun would it be to play with this guy's firepower? I mean, he's putting the three middle of the end rail, trying to go up to the opposite middle of the end rail. Ish. Well, mission accomplished. Great job. Well, here's how you begin about a third of your pro innings, end rail to end rail. So you're going to have to learn to play from here and defend yourself. And it's not fun. Practice is not glamorous, but it's winning. Looks like he's got both sides of this ball. That helps a ton. He can go three behind the eight and just kind of float behind the five, maybe. Well, yeah, that'll do. Did it great. He left a little piece. So oh, did he? Okay. Yeah, Filler's well. going to be able to cross this over, double the three probably, and run the cue ball. Boy, good speed again. And here we are. End rail to end rail. <laughs> yeah. Do practice from here. 
And the key is to not lose. You're not going to win from here, but the key is to not lose on this particular turn. And these great players are great at getting themselves back to the table one more time, and maybe they do get a more favorable circumstance to play from. Does he have to go off the left here? Is he going behind the four, trying to trickle the three up table? That's the shot. Great hit, John. And that's the, to me, probably the most impressive of switching hands. You know what I mean? Getting used yep. to knocking the ball in at medium speed or whatever, but that touch from distance, that's just incredible. Really good. Yeah, Filler has to kick at this. That was a tremendous shot. Yeah, and I know when John's on, on air, I talk about it, but actually the, probably the most impressive thing to me about the switch is the mental side of things, knowing what you're going to have to go through after being you know, a top 20, 20 player in the world probably. Yeah. Um, and, and you're going to have to go through a lot of beatings before you, you get back anywhere close to that, uh, that type of uh, ranking. Yeah, I've always respected Moore's approach because he always dresses nice, he, he, uh, respectful of the sport, good player, kind of a quiet guy. Look at that shot. <laughs> Kick it right in. <laughs> Five by ten, four and a quarter inch pockets, filler. Makes a nice square hit and is rewarded. Well, he's really excelled at his kicking game. Now, that one he kicked in, but he kicked it dead right, trying to go through the ball and follow the cue ball downward as it, maybe the three comes up. He rarely ever kicks at him the wrong way. Really improved his game in that regard. And then sometimes you make a mark. Look at that smooth hit. When you play as much pool as these guys, you start to feel shots like that. It, when you kind of check up, it's almost like uh, when you see two fighter jets and one gets finally missile lock on the other one. It's like, dee -dee -dee -dee, it was missile away. And that's how it feels when you're in stroke. And I know Efren feels out too when he kicks. He, he can just feel like he's hitting it right. Oh, absolutely. That's why you'll, I think you rarely see the great players use like a system. Even though we know systems, I know a few systems and stuff like that. You know, you might use a little reference, but really it comes down to that feel. That's what makes you go to a certain tip position on shots and everything yeah. else. So, If I was to describe feel too, I would say it's the, when you, when you have a super tight repeating stroke, that's when it comes in. That's where you can start to feel something. If you have a random stroke, you miss hit the cue ball so often you never get any feel. It's just hope. You know, no, that absolutely. You know, and when you do something consistently, you're, now you're going to get good data back. You're going to yeah. get good information back, and you can start to learn how to aim better, everything else. So a repeating stroke, anything repeating, that's the key. Well, this, does, this guy here does a lot of repeating, knocking the balls in, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you. Over and over and over. All right, you can go either way here. I kind of like the high with the hair left. Myself, staying on that same side of the table. Like that. Three-time Moscone Cup MVP to include 2023, Josh Filler. Well, you know, Mora hasn't uh, did much bad. That rack, he played it perfect. We were complimenting his safety and the kick, and you were saying, oh, you know, that's what's impressive is to be able to get those speeds opposite handed. And then Filler kicks it and runs out. <laughs> that was all perfect. That was kind of, that, that right there sums up how Shane Van Moning's match went last night. Mm. Shane played great. Fantastic. Hardly anybody would have beat him that set. And uh, he just, uh, Corteza beat him on those tactical games. Got that first shot. Nice look at the kick again. Yeah, really good. And, uh, you know, Filler's invincible when he starts kicking in balls like that and running out behind it because he can, he doesn't need any help. He can make his own openings. It's, yeah, well, you know, we know what he has offensively, but a lot of people just still don't give him enough credit what he's done improving his game on the tactical side of things. I mean, his safeties, he, you know, he, he's learned all the kind of traditional ones, but he reminds me of a Rodney Morris, like the, the safety he played Nick in the six and going behind the ten, right? Mm -hmm. In that one game, second game, right? 
I think it was. Yeah. That's not a traditional safety. That's yeah. talent. That's, yeah. you know, seeing something and being able to execute it because of your touch and your execution. But, but uh, and mm-hmm. then he's got the standard ones as well. Could have banked this in the side pocket or passed it. Yeah, I think he wants to kind of or tuck it two five. rails. Yeah, okay. behind the five like that. that. Yeah, exactly. Let's make sure you get him. And what I love is like a safety like that, right? He's not cinching that. So he played it to be able to go heavy in there, right, with a little spin, and, and that way he can make more of a stroke on the shot. That's why the, I think, mm-hmm. I think the performance, uh, that's why he executes so well so often. Big kick here to get John started again. This is called a small ball because it's out in the middle of the table, so you only have about six inches of margin of error on this. Yeah, center ball, real flat cue ball here. Great hit. Boy, he tagged it square. And, uh, of course, this is a demanding shot. We'll see. I don't think he rolls it. I think Filler's going to show us a little power going back and forth. Looks a little thin to roll, huh, Mark? Yeah, and these guys don't like to trickle them up there. They like to get through the cue ball good so they don't have the inclination to decelerate. But he did. No problem. Yeah, it's well, soft. Yeah, and it wasn't so baby soft, and he held it. So maybe the angle was fooling us a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now, he did hit it to the thick side of the pocket, the one. So that probably helped the cue ball three or four inches, five inches maybe. All right, doesn't have to go anywhere, really. You can cut the four in and go around the six, no problem. So if you're worried about the stretch or moving the cue ball, just kind of kill this and dink it in. Went three rails. The yeah. cue ball looped in a big way, and then th- now yeah. he's in trouble. That's surprising to me. Filler is a very smart player and doesn't mind distance at all. And Really, the four was a chip shot from down table, and he could easily go by the six and for the yeah. seven. So that was surprising. I think, you know, it speaks to just a little bit of inexperienced youth. The physics, understand the exact physics, takes years to develop. Filler's only, what, 26 years old. He's just, he seems older because he's been playing at a high level since we've ever met him for the last eight or nine years. But I'll never forget that nice shot. I'll never forget Ralph Suquet told me, yeah, this new kid, he's going to be the best German player ever. I'm like, what? There's not going to be anybody better than Ralph Suquet. You know? and, and by golly, I have to say, I guess Ralph wasn't exaggerating about this one. Yeah, I can't... I- the last year that Shane won the U.S. Open, 2016, is that right? His last win? Uh, let's see here. Uh, no, no, 2015. 50, was it 15? <laughs> I know, because <laughs> scoundrel Corey tried to cheat him out of the last track of the losing bracket. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so. that's funny. You brought up those names. I Actually, I should remember what year, because I, I, I made a run. I got to the Final Four of the winners that year, uh, the last year. Uh-huh. He won it, yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> But that was the year, first time I ever seen filler, and uh, three or four Americans said, "This is this is the guy that's going to hold the crown right here yeah. in, in Europe." So, yeah. Um, and yeah. That, this was guys that were like, "Really?" And you know, I'm, they're telling me right. this. I'm, I'm, so, <laughs> and he beat Shane actually on the winner's side that year. Um, Shane, of course, does does what he does and pounded his way through the loser side and won the tournament. Did he beat? Uh, I think maybe Chang in the finals. Yeah, he beat Chang in the finals, I believe. Pure. Dang, that was that long ago, 2015. Mm-hmm. I actually played Corey in that tournament the first round. He should have beat me. We both played perfect. Mark, he had me 10-7. to seven. And, uh... He scratched on a shot, and he never really got much back to the table, really. But. Yeah, Corey's only 46 years old, and he's an enigma, a long-standing great player. He's probably third in all-time Moscone Cup appearances, uh, behind uh, Shane Van Boning and 
Johnny, yeah. I think maybe Earl has more than Corey Steele, or it's close. I think Corey has 14, is it right? Something like that. Way up there. I, okay, well, maybe there's a three people, but I know, yeah. I know Shane and Johnny are tied at 17, and then maybe the, Earl does have 14 or 15. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, he's got. <laughs> Corey's right I think, there. I think Earl's, let's see, played all the years that I played, except for the year I accidentally had to play for him. That was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Now you like that position, Mark. What have they told you 24 hours before you got to play? Yeah. Huh? Oh, man. You did good, though. Yeah, I thought I was all right. I didn't hit a ball in like three months at that time. So, But if you enjoy it, you got a better chance. And I've always enjoyed the Moscone Cup playing. Yeah, and it's pressure. not like you weren't thinking pool for three months anyway. So oh, no, for that sure. It yeah. you too long. Yeah, and I, you know, knowing the slick table helps. You know, you can kind of a little manage around versus uh, – you know, worry so much. Oh, he's breaking great. He needs it, though. Uh, now. Good starter here. Seven ball fell, one ball. Not too bad. Yeah, he's, he may shoot this righty just because of the stretch. I don't know. But the thing is, he's got a little question mark. You know, Filler's kicked out of two or three already. And he's kind of on the fence here as far as cutting this in or maybe playing the simple safety. And I wouldn't blame him if he went for the cut, just thinking Filler might kick out of another one. Oh, he's just going to stop it. Yeah, it's hard safety not to pass. I mean, to pass up on. But Filler's going to have to follow the same route, maybe. I don't know. Really difficult rack with the five. So a hit here would go a long ways, even if you surrendered somewhat of a shot. Especially because the six is back down table, so. I like the same route. I'd hate to tear these balls apart somehow, yeah. you know. Yeah. But again, talked about it earlier. He really, to me, does, rarely kicks at it wrong. I mean, you know, what he does, it, it kind of makes sense, and then he hits them real well. If you want separation, up. you're going to have to go high velocity here. It's yeah. not likely to tag it square. But the thing is, again, the, the hit goes so long here with the five, right? With the right. five the way it is. So any hit, I think, is uh, you've done really well. Oh, he went long way. Yeah. I thought he had to come in short. Okay. Yeah. Made a hit. Yeah, and just look where he's got to start from now. Even though it's a, it's a shot, it's not easy. On the rail into the middle, going away from the two. He's got to go past the eight, make sure he gets past the eight. He's skewing like he might go on the rail. Mm, missed it by quite a bit. Yeah. Mr. Smooth got just a hint quick there. He clearly didn't like that. Knew he had to amp up a little bit. As you know, you trail in a match 4 0, it's easy to want to try to make four games in one stroke type of thing. It just doesn't work like that. I love what you said the other day, though, talking about working, you know, once you get a little bit out of line or tough, you have to work two or three shots to get. You can't get it all back. You can't hit a home run every time. Well, it's a better way. Um, you know, occasionally you'll come across and say, all right, I got to get it all back right now because that's the situation. Yeah. But more often than not, you can work through the next couple balls knowing you're going to not be perfect. And just yeah. accept it, and you'll get yourself back in line. All right. I'm sure John Morris would be glad to be back at the table this. Now he needs to smooth this one back to the center area of the table here. And he got the Oof. he got the five opened up with that kick shot as well. Great shot. A little disappointed because he knows he has to work a little harder here. But uh, to me, he got the ball down, got your rhythm back. Nice, smooth, effective draw. Got it back. And this is the same case with most players, but I see this with John a lot. If you're going to get a mistake from John, it's usually going to be early. Um, once he settles in, it's very, very few mistakes. And he really comes with the tough shots towards the end of the, uh, of the matches. So get himself back in, and I think he can put some heat on filler. 
One morning I was uh, woke up and was drinking some coffee, and John Moore was playing another pro, a huge $25,000 snooker match on mm. Facebook Live. Yeah, that was recent. Yeah. Did you did you happen to catch it? No, it? no, no. Oh, I did see it was happening, though. Really good. Really, uh, I watched the whole thing. I had work to do, too, so <laughs> got captivated. Went down to the hill, and John had the best of it, it looked like. The other guy was dogging it a little bit, and John took on what I thought was too challenging of a shot, but Peggy Lyon told me today or yesterday that he thought he should play it, So, and I don't play that much snooker, but anyway, it turned in, and the guy got out on him, but it was a real fun match to watch. All right, tricky shot here. He's got to come two rails towards the eight. He's got to have good speed, avoiding the eight, can't overhit it. Watch out, eight. Watch out, eight ball. That's the problem. And it was so touchy because he he knows he couldn't really, you know, let it go. It's going to mm -hmm. get past the eight and underneath the five. So right. And anytime you got to cue the ball and get into it, that's when you're. You know, could lose the speed a little bit and the line. Well, how much it arcs into the first rail gobbles up a ton of the energy out of the mass. That's the deal, you know. It's, it, just fractions dictates the speed. Yeah, I'm sure he's disappointed. It, you know, sometimes you also have to play the right shot, but there's some risk with it. And it probably oh, was the right shot, yeah. but the, <laughs> that was the time that, that when you can least afford it when you're already down 4-0. That's pretty much the name of our game. Yeah. <laughs> this is, you know, you're going to have to gamble quite often. Right. You have to take kind of that risk-reward analysis, and that wasn't the wrong decision. It was just a misfortune when it doesn't come up roses. One thing, you know, John's breaking the balls really well, so you've got to maintain, stay focused. You know, probably hope the break goes against Josh a little bit with this 5 yeah. nothing lead now. Yeah. This is going to be hard to overcome without a little help. But, but again, you know, just mm -hmm. oh, got all awkward here. I might get a righty. Yeah, this is what I was saying. I've seen him shoot righty before. Mm -hmm. Big stretch. Okay, 5 nil. Nothing has gone right for Mora. He really hasn't played poorly. No, the one ball in the side, that's the one he'd like to have back. But other than that, really, he's played some beautiful safeties that have really not rewarded any shots. Yeah. And while we have a moment here, I want to say that I could not tell you how proud I am of the guys that I have play under me at U.S. Team Bayards in the little... St. Louis region. We have 15 or 20 of them here scattered throughout the tournament, playing, competing, trying to get better, and carrying themselves with respect and dignity and honor, dressing nice. You know what I mean? Because that's one of our mandates in there. It's mm. that our, our group is only for people that understand the sport is more important than the individual. That's oh, part yeah. of our mission statement. And when I look out here and they're wearing their team jerseys and stuff, it, I mean, it's I put a ton of sacrifice into it, but it is so rewarding to see if everybody could bring even just one person, we'd have a heck of a thing, you know? Yeah. This is, and I'm sure you'll meet him as we go forward. And Josh gets that little hop on the cue ball sometimes, and it does take away some of the ball action. Yeah, he crossed o it over just a hair. And here's that start for John. Not much of a shot on the one, but at least he's at the table. Jacked up, though, man. Brutal. Yeah. I mean, this is not a hard safety if he could cue the ball. Could hit uh, either side of the one, really, and play it safe. I think he's going to go left side of the one now, since he's a little awkward cueing, trying to drift the cue ball down. He's got a lot of cover with the four and the eight, trying to hold the one there. Uh, he caught it a little thick. Not bad, though. Jeremy, you came to teachers players before, right? I sure did. I played uh, Justin and uh, and Danny Smith. I shot between them. We played six ahead for a big number. Yeah. And uh, we played ten hours a day. We played seven days and broke even. 
Okay. Seven straight days wow. I shot between those two monsters. Yeah. Well, anyway, Teach was sitting down here himself, and he just sold out. But do you know he's a major league batting instructor? Yeah, I did know that, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah what an incredible guy. I've known him for years. I moved here. I moved to St. Louis just because of Teacher. I was living in Hong Kong at the time, and uh, he said, come over here, and we'll go to the Cardinal Games, and you can help me run one of my pool rooms. And I thought I'd go there for two years, and that was in 97. Mm. <laughs> so, but I met my wife, and that was that. So, Wow, nothing easy here. I think the two may slide by, but, I mean, do you want to shoot that with a small pocket <laughs> from some angle here? It would be tough if you had ball in hand. You could do it, but if yeah. you don't have ball in hand, it's really tough. Well, he's got to come with it here. He's got to come above the three, two rails sliding across, I think. I think if he tries to come one rail, I think it becomes a very missable ball. He could lose the cue ball because it just doesn't seem like it agrees to hold on this side to me. It agrees a little more to let the stroke out and come twice across. We'll see. Nice uh, shot. Yeah. Nice. Ooh. Thank you, 5 by 10 It's in the drink on a 4.5 by 9 I don't think John has a whole lot of thank yous in him at the moment. No. Mark. You know, I was almost thinking cross corner might not be that bad on that shot, too. You just pass the cue ball over, let the cue ball come down by the 10. But he had a lot decent space to hit before the side and yeah. go across is what I was thinking, you know, above oh. the three. And then it, it looked like it agreed with the, the, the shot itself. I think he felt the same way I did, though. If you don't have ball in hand, you don't want to play from way down table on the two. The no, player. no, I meant the other pocket on the two, though, because it was clear to go by the five. Oh, You know what I mean? I Let the cue ball saying. spread two okay. rails. Yeah. Okay. You know, we talked about that shot a yeah. couple times already this week. and. uh he was so far away right. from the one, I thought it was hard to hold the, the speed on one side of the table. But if you let it go, I think it was okay. We got a little roll. Let's see if you can capitalize. Uh, it's just not maybe in the cards today for John. Just one thing after another. That was a difficult shot. Could have got a little easier one. All right. Probably you cut the two towards the four nine. No, could try and bury the cue ball, I guess. But this is touchy. That's what I thought he'd be looking at, but I wouldn't think that's the right shot. That's, but he did it. He, he made the two. No, he didn't bury it. Hung up the two. I would don't think he was going for the bank. To be honest with you, he looked at it after he missed the safety, but it just didn't make sense to. To yeah. go for the bank there and play the cue ball like that, it's just right. I think your shot was better to just thin the the two over by the clutter and let the cue ball come all the way down the table. Even if you don't get a complete hook, well, the way the four nine laid, you could get the two underneath those balls uh, pretty easily. And being a lefty and closer to the two, I think now John he's got to try and make something happen here. Yeah, yet another time he's got the cue ball at forty five degrees, which that uh, doesn't bode well for consistency. Well, that's one of the few times I've seen him have to shoot off the rail elevated with power that he doesn't switch to the right hand. Mm -hmm. And now maybe he's making that progression again like he did with other things uh, with this switch to where he can handle it with the left as well as the right. I think he shoots this combo. It's a pretty big pocket. Key to this is don't baby it too much. It'll slide. Pure. Yeah. Man. Good shot. And that, you, we talked about kicking and feeling it. That's where a player will get behind a shot like that, these great players, and say, man, I really feel like the, I'm going to knock this in, even though yeah. some people might say this is this is a haphazard shot, right? Right. No, it's almost magical. You almost kind of get in that little area where it just feels good. It kind of checks up and goes down, locks in, and, and boy, it's amazing how much better you hit them rather than Gosh, I hope I hit this good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's what happens, you know. Again, you keep doing it more and more. You believe in it. And, and maybe that's yeah. the key is to believe in it, you yeah. know, once you once you kind of feel that. All right, Ricky, coming to the table. The four is not much of a question. Got to maintain here. This is a little tricky. Oh, nice path with the cue ball. It's going to fall underneath it a little bit so they not really hold bother position on the eight as much as getting from the eight to the nine maybe and 
he got right where natural he's going at the nine. If he stuns it, he's going a long ways to get position. Like if he stuns this past the side two rails, like a middle left maybe. He's gotten in the most awkward position for mm -hmm. an easy shot. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Right, everything doesn't lend itself to getting on the eight easily. And like I said, to get to the nine as well. So this is going to open up a little bit. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> Got it the ball in hand position. And that was not natural, folks. He made that, you know, all kind of happen. happen. Yep. were safeties he didn't quite get it you can see of course the rack track speaks for itself national beer academy six in a row The one's going to be in a good spot. See what the six has to say. It got out of the way. So I wouldn't say he connected totally flush on that break. A little high on the cue ball. But you can tell it wasn't, wasn't much bad. You can see, though, the cue ball was about to start spinning forward a little bit before that kiss. So, again, this first shot, really important, easy one, but to get position on the two, plenty of options. Like this simple one. There's some work here though, the six to the seven. Pretty demanding. Looks like he can just draw straight back. I don't think he even has to go to the side rail. Smoothly hit. Yeah, but now the real issue, since he did overrun a little bit, again, is the demanding part of the rack was really the six to the seven. So that's why the position on the five, pretty important. Get handy on the six. It looks like actually he's not quite as thin, so he should be able to hold dead center of the table somewhere around there. Okay, he held it even more. Okay, going to the righty, and I think this is more for the stretch than it is really needing to shoot this righty. Well done. Kind of a much needed rack here. Well, so like I said, he's breaking well. So if, you know, needs a little help again from the pool gods on when it comes to maybe fillers break, but. I 
Six to one is our score. Nice. Go out there. Bobby Bacon win. Looks like Matt and Corteza and Rob Sayers drew each other in the first round of the one pocket. That's a tough one. You said Zelensky and Gorse next at the 3.30? Yes. Dash. Yep. Those two have played a few times. Yeah, Gorse is 23, Zelensky 22. Battle of the youngest. Freller got here by beating Miesko Fortunski. Feller had four breaking runs in that set. Was that 10 6, I believe, or 10 7, maybe? Er, I know they. I'll have to go back through my notes. Well, I think uh, Fortunski could have won it. He, he really hardly. He broke dry so many times. Yeah. Uh, uh, I it was remember. Amazing, yeah. Yeah. He kept, right. And he never really changed the break once. Uh, he, he kept the same speed. I, I called it kind of slapping at it, a little wrist action, kind of. And the thing is, he must have practiced it to where he was really pouring balls in because uh, he, he believed in it. Now, Josh, is he going to creep kind of on top of this, too? Kind of light stun here. Okay, nice shot. Oh, how did that not go? Did you see that? I mean, I know he didn't hit it perfect, but we talked about it. The table's definitely tightening up. So there's a little help, Mark. Yeah, I think it was 10 7. That Ten, I think I it was 10 find. 7 as well. And uh, Fortunsky broke and ran out three times and lost three games from three dry breaks early yeah. on. Oh, that's going to hurt. You put that little extra, like I said, uh, was it yesterday, when you feel like you may rub a ball, like right there, he yeah. felt like he may rub the five draw, drawing out, so it's easy to put that little extra on the cue ball. All right, I know he's upset not getting position, but he's just got to kind of stay focused, play good safety. He's going behind the five, it appears. I think the key here is you really can't uh, worry about the two ball too right. much. No, you got to play the cue ball totally. If you can get the two, it doesn't really matter so much where the two goes as long as the cue ball is behind the five or touching the five. Yeah, you start trying to do both, you're not going to get the snooker most likely. Good job. Yeah. This one now, you can kick two rails between the 8-10, I believe it sits okay. That's how I'd want to kick it because, you, you know, you can hit a lot of ways, right? Drop the cue ball behind the five maybe. This one's a little tough to judge, but he, he does feel like he can come across this maybe, get the cue ball up table, maybe the two goes up table. And it's a little shorter distance to hit. So. Tough hit, though. Oh, yeah. Anytime yeah. you're going into like a, like a shallow angle, right. right, it can bend on you easy. But real good safety by Moran. He's rewarded. He made sure he got that cue ball behind the five. He didn't let it hit the five on the way in to the second cushion. You know, and more often than not, it, you know, doing all these matches and, of course, playing, you know this, a lot of matches kind of have two halves, um, you know. To where, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, as long as you don't have, hopefully, a whitewash like he did have here in this first half. But, I mean, you could even be down yeah. five to one, six to two, and uh, realize that, you know, all right, the first half of the match is over. Now let's see what I can do in the second half of this match because, you know, little things change, roles and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Uh, say Josh gets kicked in on the break or something. Uh, well, a little like help that, right there after yeah. missing that one. I'd like to see that one again just because Josh was really shocked it didn't fall. And maybe there was something I missed when I was watching, but I was really shocked as well. This is one of those funny angles going three rails. If you just get into it a little bit, it might hug. Yeah, it can loop quite a bit. It looks like he did pretty well here speed-wise. Yeah. And a little bit the stretch, of course, but again, sometimes when he feels like the power's there a little or needed a little more, he'll go back to the righty. Day one of this event saw Mora over, uh, who was it, who did he play? Atencio, Jesus Atencio. Mm -hmm. He played real well, real solid, because Atencio's a great player himself. Yeah, it was a funny match, and maybe it was the first match that got a Jesus, but 
he did all the tough things, Jesus, for the most part in the match, and then missed just a couple, you know, ones maybe yeah. he, he lost a little focus on. All right, just right English, trying to spread it a little bit. And, and maybe even just a hint of inexperience showed up in a couple of the kicks or positional plays, you know, but overall, man, what an upside that kid has. Yeah, and I'm glad to see he's back out playing. I mean, he took a good uh, year and a half off, it seemed. Didn't play as much. I think he's still living here in the States. It was the Carolinas, I believe. Uh, Charlotte. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the other good players in Charlotte probably just soon he went back where he came from. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if he's learned any one pocket over there because it used to be a pretty big one pocket town, probably the biggest one pocket town for the Carolinas. <laughs> Carolinas, for the most part, was a lot of nine ball. Uh, mm. Produced a lot of great nine ball players, by the way. Okay, a couple games in a row here for uh, Johnny Mora, and he's breaking. It's a six and the nine right behind the one, the seven and five are the wing ball or corner balls that have been starting to track four rails around when not kissed. And from this side, you can look at that two ball as well. That one will have a little one rail action towards that corner where he's breaking from, generally. Sometimes it gets kissed around the middle of the table, the third diamond, something like that. The way John's breaking it should should head towards that corner. Yeah, it was speeding to just where you said until it got kissed late. Yeah, Shane makes that ball so often it's amazing. It'll just kind of seems like it's rifling that one yeah. rail in the corner. All right. The filler special a little thin on the one. You can go back and forth and take a little thin cut on the two on the side. You wouldn't want to try and go between the 9-2 two too often, but he may. Actually, it sits pretty okay to do that. Oh, that was not near as thin as I thought, Mark. Well, he had a good amount of spin on there. It opened up real nice, so, uh, but boy, yeah, he floated that in there with way more control than I thought. Yeah, because he got it, even though he had a lot of spin, if you're super thin, you're not going to get it to come that high, I right. don't think, anyways. Right. But now, he took a lot of angle here. Now, he's really good at pinching it, and maybe that's to do with a little bit better reach. Yeah, I think he's coming all the way across just to... Oh, so for he, sure. Yeah, so he doesn't have to try to be cute with it. But a lot of people have problems with that shot because they let up on the stroke, and they're thinking of speed. Oh, i got to not overhit it. And what they don't understand when you let up... Your tip position doesn't have the effect of the keel near as mm -hmm. much. It's weaker. So you actually lose the cue ball more often and unfortunately occasionally miss the ball as well. All right. This should be something with a draw stroke of some sort, I would think. Could stun one rail, but the tin's a little touchy as far as going one cushion. So I think he'll elevate hit down. tell you, if you're going to look at any one thing and want to improve your game, notice how he just always trusts the cue ball getting there. You know, even a shot like that, he's going to plan on it rolling out with that good stroke. 
Yeah, he has just an uncanny aptitude for pool for such a young person. Just the straightest shooter and uh, remarkable. You know, just every time I see him, and like you said, we first saw him, it was like 2015 or 16. Mm -hmm. And even then, you could see he wasn't polished like he is today, but you could see something there that was uncommon. Yeah, and the good thing for filler, and it's easy for any player, young or not, is to get a, I don't, I hate to say burn out, but just get a little beat down, you know, because yeah. it's a hard schedule, you know, and you got to practice along with it. You got to do a lot of things, and you can tell he still just has an incredible passion for the game, not just winning. Yep, nice run out there from the dry break. 7 2 is our score. Jeremy's schedule sends him to Florida, so for all you guys want to catch up with a pool lesson, oh, I yeah. come highly recommend this. You want to actually learn rather than someone telling you what they think it is. Yeah. Jeremy Jones, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, you know, through Messenger and Facebook, you know, it's usually pretty easy. I'm, I'm going to many cities around Florida, so good chance I'll be in your area anyways. Uh, ask any pool room owners or league operators over there. So. Just so you know, when I look you up on Facebook, there's a lot of Jeremy Jones out there. Well, the funny thing is, you know, <laughs> uh, Jeremy Jones, Jeremy and Amy Jones from, um, is it Bad Boys, I think? Uh, well, they do a lot of things, but um, same name as my wife, you know, oh. his wife. And then they moved to Texas as well. So they used to live in Dallas. They moved a little north of there now, yeah. thank God. Um, but we... They get messages of mine. I get messages of theirs. Yeah. Because they do a lot of business, right? So yeah. I'll have people say, oh, you know, I need to send you that credit card number or this and that. I'm like, what is this? Who is it? So, uh, oh, I send messages out, that I think, to you. And they go, well, I'm pretty sure this isn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, but, I'll, you know, Jacksonville, Tampa, Vero, Bradenton, Creek Coral, Orlando, just – Doing a lot there for a couple weeks or so. All right. A little bit uh, the break working against Josh a little bit here, even though he hit him really well. Yeah, Mark, that trip to Florida, I've been doing it now for a few years, and it's nice to get uh, out of that winter weather for a couple weeks there. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if he might roll out to the kick here. Now, you have a little more. I think the nine-footer makes you roll out to the kick a little more often. I think you can have other options on the ten-footer at times because of the distance and moving the cue ball and whatnot. But with the two over the side here, really hard to make a difficult one ball. So I think that's a pretty smart push out. Now here, would you think he's kicking to the lower hemisphere and bring the cue ball back by the six, or you think he's trying to? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, the top one is the one that is not only harder to judge, but you'll right. occasionally whiff it doing right. that. Right, <laughs> so right, you don't right. want whiff it. So this would be soft speed. Yeah. Look at this. He's going to sell out, but he hit it really well overall. He's like that's the one place. Probably top with a little right. Try to get position as quick as possible. Let the power up a little bit. These are four and a quarter inch pockets we're playing. Oh, he stunned it. What a shot. Well, made it swallow, too. <laughs> Didn't want to. It well, was so good ahead, too. Yeah, to me, that's like usually the stroke. Like if the stroke's real good, right? You can open up that pocket a little bit. I think Shane SVB did that so well. Oh, you're not kidding. I, I don't think there's a top player that has more power in their swing than Shane. Uh, I have to think about that one. But, yeah, Shane, Shikachi has quite a bit. That's for sure. Um, just that, that 
that build of his, you know, he's just, yeah. he's just really possesses a lot of power. But well, I, maybe I should say it then with the accuracy too. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Shane, no, Shane has a ton of power for he, sure. Yeah. He manufactures angles that other guys don't even try for with that power. But then you know when you hit balls hard, now you have to have you know super accuracy. There's no forgiveness at that. All right, he's got to go a little somewhere here. Four doesn't pass the seven, so two rails out of the corner, maybe. Oh, wow, what a shot. This cue ball needs to slow down, though. He's going to get something, it looks like. Uh, oh, no, he's not. Well, I personally think, you know, there's a, I can name off four or five, but when the balls lay tough, I think Shane's still the top five player in the world when the balls lay tough, you know. Yeah. And maybe even higher than that, maybe still the best, really. Yeah. His mental toughness is uh, maybe not qu quite what it was, but it's, sh it's still really good. Good effort. He good might effort. Give it to him. 5-9. Yes. Good. 5-10. Yeah, yeah, that's right. 5-10. Excuse me. <laughs> but I know what you mean. <laughs> Winner. It's, what time is it, Mark? Well, it's 5 minutes to 10. Yeah. <laughs> right? Here we go. And 7-3. And gets the break. Right. So, again, two halves of these matches. Now in the lead. We played 10 games here in the Big Foot. 10 ball arena. Okay, we're going to replay. And Solid impact here. Run in like a bullet. Hit the cue ball. The second half cue ball comes around to get position on the 5-10. The four ball Go works please. its way into the side. Yeah, the coolest thing, really, if you watch the cue ball, when the four hits it, it picks up speed and it spins back yeah. around for that position. It's kind of cool and neat to see. Yeah. All right, John. Trying to put a few things together. Took a timeout. Breaking the ball is great. Just got to keep doing that. and Hopefully a few more things unfold for him. Boy, his 10 ball break has really improved. It's spent a lot of time doing and working on it. Five ball short, the eight ball came short. How's the four wheeler looking? No good. No good. It's Not a dry break. Yes, a dry yeah. break. Yeah. The four is a little difficult, but with the two, three there, it does play in the side. Hard, hard to get on the five a little bit though, and maybe a little hard to get on this, uh, this one to the two. He's going to have to draw this, and I think a little uncontrollable, un, you know, uncontrollably. Like it's, you can't really figure out where you're going to go exactly. I'm not, is he going forward? Can he go by the six here? Oh, wow. oh, he's using the back of the six. That was wow, creative. What a shot! I don't know if he got there, but that was. Uh, Pretty, yeah. Pretty crafty. I think it's a safety here. I don't know if you can get at this. These guys got all the shots. You know? I mean, oh, they yeah. just size them up immediately and then execute them. Here it is. And real, and real. Once again, this is where you're starting if you're playing pro pool. About 30% of your times to come to the table, maybe more. Now he can kick either either way, and they sit both pretty similar, of course, with the cue ball in the middle diamond and the two near the middle diamond. But he wants to kick this way. That way, if he gets to the back of this, the two can escape. It wouldn't go into the three or something like that. Medium speed, don't need a lot. Uh, oh, didn't, didn't expect that. He's going to bump the five in a better position as well, which is going to make that four ball that's tied up a little easier. Because he can play the four on the side. It does go in the side. I don't think I try to open him here, Mark. Mm -mm. I either play, you can roll the two, right? I like rolling the two, laying on the rail a little underneath the three. And then you got a natural to go right into the 410 if you want to open him. Josh does some unconventional things because he has that super firepower. I think he even tried to lightly graze it, possibly, there. Yeah, and but if he did, he did. But but now he's got the angle to go into him as well. Good thing about this one, man. He really doesn't have to bump it much. Remember, about like a foot speed. 
like the four, the ten is just going to go like a foot away. It does go in the side pocket, though. Oh, <laughs> all the great shots there. He looped it around the ten. Was he trying to bump it, or what was he doing? I there? think absolutely he was. If you're yeah. going to play a position in the side, you wouldn't hit it like that. You would normally use inside English and creep the cue ball downward. Didn't try to force something that wasn't there. Yeah, I think he just overhit the the three ball and made it arc downward. I think if he hits it a little lighter, it holds the line pretty easily and hits the the four or the ten. Ooh, this is going to be a pretty one. Watch the cue ball arc a little bit. Well, that was not easy ever, and then he forced it a little bit beyond what it was wanting to do. We got Kathy Kroom in upstate New York listening in. We got Mike Mancinas, my uh, financial advisor and poker dealer, who says I need to keep working, but nevertheless, glad you're here. You notice, though, how Josh, there's like no even thought of running to the short pocket of the right there. He just plays it real standard. You know what I mean? Like a 5 by 10 a lot of players might hit a high left on the six and run the cue ball over there for the seven. And you couldn't blame him too much, but John, uh, Josh, no, no thought of that at all. <laughs> just keeps it real simple. <laughs> I've never had this type of firepower. I just wonder <laughs> how much fun it would be to just, I'll just make every shot from anywhere. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. I mean, I shot fairly straight, but nothing like these guys. There's my old buddy Phil Wyndham entering the arena. Phil is a one pocket uh, fan and he plays and he plays well and if oh he's going to be a hint short and this could be a hard stretch I've encouraged him to take my class you know when I come to Chattanooga and he says yeah I watch he says it but it looks like so much work I'm just going to ask for an extra ball <laughs> you know <laughs> and he is a character like yeah. that fun guy you get to hang out with him and you will be having a nice meal oh yeah yeah, I liked my time in Chattanooga, way back in the road days. Spent a lot of time there. Okay, 8-3 after Filler lost three racks on a row. He'll be breaking in rack 12. He's playing an 899 clip. That, that gets the business done on a 5x10. If you get a chance to go by the Chattanooga Bayer Club, he has the best burgers. I live about, oh, eight or nine hours north of there, and I'll be mowing, and I'll be thinking, you know, those burgers, it's not that bad of a drive. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> now, I don't do it, but I do kind of figure out a way to rationalize it if I did. Well, I'll tell you, Chattanooga is one of the prettiest cities, too. Just a gorgeous town. Really. Yeah. For a long time, uh, it's one of the richest cities per capita in our country, actually. Quite a few uh, of the really rich uh, have residency there. Tell you what I liked when I was traveling on the road. A lot of the bar owners got together and threw away the last six balls out of a eight ball rack on their bar table. So everybody had to play nine ball and they all played for small stakes. And the games went by fast, where if you get bad players playing eight ball, <laughs> you have oh, to wait yeah, a long yeah. time. These games clipped off, so they, the reason they did it was they got more games in, they got more quarters in. But I liked it because everybody knew the rules, and they all played for small stakes, so it was all good. All right. A little awkward here, not too bad, but a little bit with the four the way it is. He did catch the three. You saw he had <laughs> to get into the cue ball a little bit. The high, he was going two rails around, but then the top spin hooked it a little bit and took some pace out of it as he lightly clipped the three. Okay. Really got it pretty good. Yeah, he's just got to get at least to where he's at now. Somewhere around there. Oh, good shot. 
And he's going to be a little straight, but he can cue down and stop the ball. Yeah, Looks like, or even maybe even draw back a hint if he needs to. No, he's got a little angle, so it's just that light stun that he loves. Oh, that yeah. one actually had a little more stun than normal, but again, he's the greatest stunner of the ball that I've ever seen. You know, day in, day out, I mean. He's got so many different ones. and A uh, little sloppy there with the five going in. He's going to carry an angle here, mm -hmm. though. Tangled up the eight and nine. Yeah, it's natural to go towards it. It's a matter if he can reach it. He could get backside as well. Could just lay up for the cross side bank. That's not terrible. Going at it. Oh, golly. Wiped it right off the edge of the eight there to open it up. Now he's going to have to stun across. This is a pretty shot because yeah. got to power up. You got to hit the pocket pure. I think oh. it's either draw behind you all the way or uh -huh. follow, really. Yeah. I don't think the stun is there, really, to the side rail okay. getting all the way. Power draw. Yeah. This is pretty. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Tip came up a little bit. Didn't get the snatch on the cue ball. A little fortunate. But for our fans, you know, we're going to get to see another great uh -huh. shot. Yeah, he's smiling. <laughs> he's got this nice kill stroke here when he hits down on the ball, and he'll just settle for the shot on the 10. Oh, he's going forward. Wow. You see, he's down below center, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that kill stroke right there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just it was didn't... curving. Yeah, if you watch, though, the tip definitely came up. I think he was trying to draw past the side and really let it go. Big shot. <laughs> just that from this. Yeah, I just go ahead and run out. That's what I do. To the hill. First, you make it all on the hill. And a chance to move into the final four. In the next match at 3.30. And do you think, you know, I mean, some of those, you know, the ones that we consider the absolute best in the game. Here's our TPAs, 9-10. Very limited mistakes overall. John not having the, the match he wanted, but kind of was a little one-sided towards him at the beginning. But yeah. Do you think, though, that, you know, I think it's easy to say I really want to beat this guy, not saying he dislikes Phil or anything like that, but just to, you know, to beat him. And I think you can put a little extra pressure, even the, even those great players. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Uh, what a feather in your cap. You, you beat one of those talents like that on this table. This is kind of like the Players' Championship tournament to begin with. Yeah. It's all feature matches. And, you know, a guy like Filler, Van Boning, Gorst, they all got targets on their back. I mean, even if you didn't do any good, you can say, well, it knocked out Filler. <laughs> yeah, in the setting as well, yeah. right? So. Yeah, main arena. Jeremy Jones broadcasting your match. What more ah. did you ask for? <laughs> all right. Perfectly struck. Good break. Yeah. Give him a shot. Good. Opened up. Now, this is doable. Yeah, very doable. Everything, you know, getting from the two to the three is not very difficult. That side of the table, very clear. The position side. And after that, really, everything kind of connects. Three to the fours right there, six and eight. Seven's off the table. Put another big crowd here on the TV arena. <laughs> I mean, it's Sunday. Yes, sir. Some more big NFL games coming up later on. My Texans got spanked yesterday. Just stay off the rail. Definitely need it off the rail. It's okay. Close enough. You can just stun down that clear side of the table he's standing on. Probably go two cushions, just a cinch not being on the rail. Absolutely. The long rail. Absolutely. It'll set up nice for the lefty anyways. Perfect speed there.
This set is worth $4,000 to the winner. You can see there, left eye dominant. What happens is, and I'm not sure totally that's you know, why he had a medical issue, but I know I've had a lot of neck issues, and I'm right-handed being left eye dominant. Um, and you have to have a little more twist with your neck and stuff in position, it seems like. And, and uh, you know, can cause a little pain playing many, mm -hmm. many, many hours of pool every day. Oh, yeah, when you force that neck over and get that under your left eye like he used to be, and then, you know, he's a real diligent practicer, so he pounds in those hours, and it oh, takes yeah. a toll. Yeah, I've actually, my stance has gotten a little more closed as years have gone on, and that, ooh, my eyes got more dominant. Sorry, I kind of took that one for granted. He kind of decelerated, frankly. You know, it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying he there. took that for granted. I'm saying I took that for granted while he was shooting the 10s. Yeah, so. it was a, well, it was a routine. You expect him to break and run out. That was going to be a high-quality break and run out here. Let me go for this. Sliding the cue off the rail. This angle, hard to let it hang. Or hard to hang it, let's say. Okay, well. Filler, let's take a look at that mess, yeah. In the big foot. Always puts on a great show, so the killer yeah, you're usually not okay, aiming on, he'll be taking on the winner poorly. Of the, <laughs> the pros, especially from that distance, like Mark said, anytime you decel, that's when the stroke can break down and you can hit a little left or right on the cue ball. Yeah. A 9-11 there. Uh, pretty nice TPA for filler. I don't know if he racked before this if he broke and ran out. He didn't break and run out as near as often as he had the first one. I know Mora had one in there and would have had two there. No, he did break and run out. I okay, believe. he did. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, everybody. This has been an AccuStats video presentation. Any rebroadcast or republication without AccuStats express written consent is prohibited. Thank you for joining us, everyone, and so long for just a while. <laughs>